Chapter one is all about variable types. We have three types of variables, and I have a video that you can check out that goes over the three types of variables. But let's do that here also, and make sure to check out the other video if you want. You can click on it right now and go there and check out the other video to kind of go over it with some Mario Kart. Yay, Mario Kart! Anyways, the three types of variables are quantitative, categorical, and identifier. And that covers all of our three right here because if we can recognize what is a categorical, quantitative, or identifier, we can recognize what is not really a variable type. So let's go ahead and pull open some data here. This is our jump data set from the project. Now you'll notice jump codes things with blue and red. Now generally, and I say generally, blue is quantitative. So let's look here at age. Now if a variable is quantitative, we can subtract two numbers and that difference makes sense. So it, one, to subtract things, it has to be a number. And it has to be a real number and that difference then has to make sense. If I say my friend is 24 years old and I have another friend who's 19, and I talk about the difference, the difference is five. A difference of five years makes sense. But if I code male and female as male as one and female as two, the difference of one between this male and female does not make sense. I can code gender as a number, but that doesn't make it quantitative. Quantitative has to be actual real numbers. And one good test I've found to figure that out is you can talk about the average, and that makes sense. If we talk about the average age of 201 students, it makes sense. What is the average age of them? On average, 201 students are generally 20.2 years old. That makes sense because you're averaging together numbers. Next, we have categorical. We've got so many categorical variables to choose from here. We've got whether or not students have loans. And when you think about this, the response has to be putting people into a category. That's why it's categorical. So I always say look to the question. Anytime you're confronted with something like this on the test, ask yourself that question, answer it yourself. If the question is, do you have student loans? Answer it, yes, I do. And by answering yes, then you have put it into a category. You are saying there are categories of students who have students loans, student loans and those who do not have student loans, as opposed to someone's starting annual salary. If you ask, what do I want my starting annual salary to be? We are asking actual, a quantita actually here a quantitative amount, such as like $40,000, $50,000, not a category like a lot. So going over to the answers for number 14, you'll notice that they are all quantitative dollar amounts. You can see a difference between this person and this person of $100,000, and they really have high estimates for their starting salary. So once again, this is quantitative here, where student loans is putting people into categories and thus has a categorical response. Now identifier is a harder one to pick out sometimes because identifier is something that cannot and will not repeat and it's structurally unique for each thing in the data set. So generally you'll see an identifier at the start. Generally, I cannot promise anything. This is a test, so we're not gonna always make everything nice and neat and perfect. A lot of times in good data sets, stuff that we like to make, we put the identifier right at the start so someone can say, oh, let's talk about person number 10 in the data set. And you notice here, even when you subset for your projects, this stays, we can see the original row number. So with this in mind right here, we can figure out which person the data that we're talking about. And that is the point of an identifier. An identifier identifies. That's why it must be unique. And although it shows blue over here, it could be red. Because what if this was a one survey we had, and this was one dash, and this is 2016, so let's put in 16 here. 16, and we just did the uh, spring survey. So this might be 1-16S. And then we know we could talk about, well, which person in which survey are we talking about? And I could change everything to 2-16S, 3-16S, 4-16S, 5-16S. All those could be changed. And that would still be an identifier because they're going to be unique. And then next year when we do it, we could combine data sets if we ask the same questions and make this into one big data set. And then we'd have identifiers for all the years. Tell me about 2-18-F. That'd be the second person who answered in fall 2018. My gosh, we're getting so close to 2020. But it must be unique. That's the point of it. And now you see it has changed over here to red. So you can't trust jump for telling you whether or not that's an identifier. But 
it will stay unique no matter what if it's an identifier. And that's a little bit of a review over categorical and quantitative data and identifiers. Take some time and go over the video and give me your thoughts if you need some help and I'll help you out via email. <laughs>